Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorious. Shout it out.
people in your Amen. There we go. There we go. Amen. 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 Look at three, four people in your eyes. Say, they tell them, say, I'm so glad you press your way through the rain. Amen. 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 Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I know everybody likes to come in that one door. <laughs> amen. I know everybody likes to come in that one door. So we get a lot of people sitting on this side. So we want to ask that some of you all come on this side. Amen. Hallelujah. God's moving on the left side of the building too. Amen. <laughs> what you said, this is always this anointed side. <laughs> amen. 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 You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Um, man, it's such a pleasure to always come in. We want to welcome everybody watching online. Um, we know that that rain came down real hard. We got people living in Mississippi, people living in New Orleans, out in Covington area, Madisonville. Your Madisonville, you try to press your way on Wednesday night. Sometimes the weather just gets really bad, and we understand. But um, thank you for tuning in online tonight. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, is there anyone here at this time that's in here tonight for the very first time? If this is your very first time being in here tonight, would you please raise your hand? Amen? Look at your neighbor say, next week, bring somebody new with you. Amen? 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 Now, y'all know how we are on Wednesday nights. You know, we don't take a lot of time. It don't take all night to get it right. Don't have to be long to be strong. And it definitely don't take all day to say what you got to say. Amen? So on, on tonight, um, we jump right into it. But I just want to say this as one of my handheld announcements. Um, that on next week, on next week, on June, I mean July 6th, we are going back on the first Wednesday only. First Wednesday only. Everybody shout first Wednesday only. We're going back to fam night. Amen. Hallelujah. And what is, hallelujah, I know y'all like that. Say, what is fam night? Fam night means you don't have to come here on another night other than Wednesday for men's ministry, women's ministry, and the youth ministry. Fam night, we do all three at the same time. Amen. So that means that the men are going to be in Bridgeton Hall, the women are going to be in here. And that you're just going to take over Joy Bell. And we're going to do that every first Wednesday. So that way nobody has to come out on a Monday night at all. Amen. We love God, but at the same time, we have family responsibility, job responsibility, children responsibility. And just because you can you can blend it, we don't use the word balance anymore, Pastor Dee and I. Because balance in the thing means that you have two opposite forces that are fighting for equality. We believe in blending. Amen? Because when you have that perfect blend, how many of y'all know when you have that perfect blend, everything is just sweet? Amen? So we want to we want to make sure that we blend spouse time, children's time, job time, family time, blend all of that with, with God and what he wants to do in our lives where everybody's happy and God is pleased because what sense does it make to be in church five days a week in your house of rent? Amen? Amen. And if y'all agree with me on that, that, that God don't mind us being here Sundays and Wednesdays, if y'all agree that, put your hands together. Amen. So here it is, man. On Wednesday night, I'm going to get out the way. We always have our elders. Our elders have been doing an outstanding job now for about three years. Amen. You know, I tell pastors all the time, they say, man, How's your Bible going? Study, your Bible study going? I said, man, it's going great. Me and Pastor Keita sit down and get fed every Wednesday. They said, what do you mean? I said, we haven't preached Bible study since 2000. I mean, 2021. Sometime 2020, we haven't preached Bible study since 2020 because why? We have more than capable and anointed elders in this house that are bringing the word. And this year, some of our ministers are going to be joining on the team. Amen. All right, everybody, clap with the ministers just now. Amen. Uh, so let's stand on our feet and on tonight for the word. Let's welcome Elder Brian Lewis. Amen. You want to be on the floor, sir? Amen. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Let's uh, have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We honor you. We adore you. 
continually give you all the glory and honor because we know without you, nothing, God. It's in you that we live and move and have our being. It's only because of you that we are breathing tonight, God, and we, we are just honored to know you, God. We are so glad that you love us so much that you gave your best for us. The only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who shed his precious and powerful blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that blood that was shed for us. Thank you for every stripe that he bared on his body, God, that we can boldly declare that we are saved, that we are joined us with Christ, that we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We honor you tonight. Have your way in this place, God. I yield to you to be used for your glory. We thank you for this great vision, uh, our pastors tonight, God, and continually blessing them. And, Lord, just ha giving them, having them a heart, have them having a heart that's after you and after your people, such a blessing. We give you all the praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. First, giving honor, all honor to God. He's so good. Amen. And I thank God for another, another opportunity to bring this word tonight. Thank God for our listening audience. Um, so honored to be part of a ministry where there's a vision. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says without a vision, people perish. Amen. But we have uh, visionaries in our house. Amen. That, that love the Lord. Amen. That love the people of God. And full of the word. <laughs> Glory to God. Full of the word of God. Amen. And I, I thank God for Pastor Lawrence and Pastor Shakita tonight, all the, our, our assistant pastors, Pastor Gales, Pastor Evans, amen, this is like the first uh, lady and our elders tonight, everyone that's in the house, thank God uh, that you press your way, as our pastor said, it's good to, to press, sometimes the devil try to distract and want us to get laid back and lazy in the comfort zone, amen, but God honors us when we press, praise God, amen, amen, glory to God. Well, you know, we've been mentioning throughout the year that the four pillars that we're uh, building up on this year is, is knowing God, finding freedom, discovering your purpose, and making a difference. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that God can see further than you can see? That God knows more than you know? Amen. Uh, you you got to figure that out now. He's smarter than you. If you haven't figured that out by now, so he's, he's way smarter than us, and he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Amen. He could be working on your situation at the same time, fixing your situation. He's a mighty God and, and taking care of something over here in another country, or another part of the world. He's a mighty God. Amen. He's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Amen. Everywhere at the same time, taking care of business at the same time. Amen. And waiting on us to call on him at the same time. Praise God. Amen. He's a mighty God. Amen. Amen. A few days ago, I was talking with God, and it's so good to, to just be able to fellowship with God. Man, that's an honor that he gave us, that we can come to him so freely. And just talking with God, and uh, uh, what God had dealt with me about during the beginning of this year is he said, get your body in line with my word. He said, start taking care of your health. And I, at that time, he said that I was feeling pretty good. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, you know, yeah, okay, God, I got you. you know. And I didn't know that he saw some stuff that I didn't even feel in my body, man. Amen. So the devil was attacking me, and I didn't even know because I was feeling good and everything. And, um, and all of a sudden, man, I landed in the emergency room. <laughs> And um, the devil just began to launch all kind of attacks, amen. The, and many of you know that I retired this year, so I, I think I put my retirement in. It was May 4th, amen. Well, prior to that, the devil just did, when I started announcing to my colleagues and fellow workers that I'm retiring, man, the devil went through all kind of stuff at me. Like, oh, no, you know you're not going to enjoy your retirement. You know you're not going to do, you know, you're going to be sick. You're going to, you know. But God had already dealt with me about taking care of my health. Amen. God is way ahead of the game. Amen. And so I began doing what God say. Um, and but my doc, well, how many doctor visits? I had from May 4 to today, I had more doctor visits, including an emergency room visit, than I've had in the last five years. 
Amen. <laughs> so that was some serious attacking going on. Amen. And so I said, okay, God. So I was before God the other day. I said, God, I said, I want you to, to help me, show me. I want the manifestation. Because, you know, we call those things that be not as though they were. And we're supposed to do that. Amen. How many of y'all do that? You call things that be not as though they were. But how many, you know, sometimes you want to see some manifestation. <laughs> Amen. You want it to be there now, you know. And so I was believing God. And I said, Lord, I, I really want manifestation. See the manifestation in my body and my everything. God, you know what he asked me? He asked me a question. He said, what is the word for your LTWI family this year? I was embarrassed. I'm going to tell you something. I could not remember. <laughs> I'm just being transparent. I could not remember the word for this year. And I know God had gave a prophetic word. He gave one every year for this ministry. Amen. But I could not remember it. So God said, go back, study it, write it down, and never forget it again. And I did exactly what God did. I, so I went back to the Facebook videos, man. I was looking in my notes. I couldn't find it. I, I, I don't know what, what I did with them. And um, so I went back to the Facebook videos, uh, January 31st, the, the New Year's Eve service. But God, uh, God used pastor to bring forth the prophetic word for this ministry. And he said, how many, know, how many, anybody here besides Pastor Key to know what the word is? Restitution. Amen. Restitution. The year of restitution. Man, when God showed me that, my faith went from 20% to 100%, Pastor Gail. It's like, it was like Popeye getting his spinach, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, whoa, restitution. I said, that's what I've been asking God for, and it's right, in my, right under my nose. So he brought me back to it. He said, I want you to read that whole word uh, that was prophesied to this ministry and never forget it. Write it down. Get it in your heart and never forget it again. So I asked the media ministry to put that word up for me if they can on the screen. Amen. Amen. And that, this is the word. That many of us know, and we've, we've seen it, we've uh, pastor preached it, and I had to read this over, and I read it, I, it says, you know, and it's based upon Acts 3, 19 to 21, for the sake of time, we're not going to read all of Acts, you can read that, reference that, but it says, for those who return unto me and desire to know me in a more intimate way, make me their priority. I will cause everything the enemy has destroyed or stolen from them to be restored and returned to them. In every area of their lives that is lacking, I will send abundance. Let me tell you something. Standing here, God is my witness. When I read that word, I had pain in my body at that time. When I finished reading that word, I had no pain in my body. I say, God, you're doing it already. God is a restorer. You ought to tell your neighbor, God is a restorer. He wants to restore to you everything that the locust and the canker worm and the parma worm has stolen from you. Amen. He is a restorer. And then God brought me over to Joel 2 and 25. You can put that up, please. Where it says, I will restore unto you. The years, and the Lord had me stop right there. He said, years. God is going to restore the years. Amen. Not, not just what you lost yesterday. God is looking at the years. The enemy has been stealing stuff for years. The locust has been eating up stuff for years. The palmer worm and the canker worm has been eating stuff, stuff for years. Amen. But God said, I will restore. Everybody say restoration. This is the year of restitution. This is so important, uh, why it's so important that we keep the prophetic words spoken to this house in our hearts. Don't let it slip. It's not just a, a thing that churches do to, to have a prophetic word every year. It's not just something that, a phase. Uh, it's not uh, uh, an act. It's real. It's real. Amen. And we ought to embrace it as being part of our, I mean, the carry us through that year. Amen. And so God showed me, say, son, it's the year of restitution. I will restore the years 
amen, that the locust and the canker worm and the parma worm has eaten up. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, uh, and it's, it's God is so good, amen, the way he directs us, this is why our relationship with him is so important, amen. He, the Holy Ghost is talking all the time. Yes, he is. God wants to talk to us all the time. He wants us to talk to him all the time. Some of us say, well, how can we talk to God all the time? Amen. Easy. Amen. Just have him on your heart. Wherever you go, it's not a, a certain posture God is looking to, you know, for. You know, if you, you're in trouble out in the street somewhere and you can't say, well, I, I'm going to get to my, wait, when I get to my prayer closet, I'm going to pray about that. No. You can pray right then and there and talk to God and say, Lord, help. That's the quickest prayer you can pray. Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. So he says, for those who desire to return to me and desire to know me in a more intimate way, make me their priority. I will cause everything the enemy has stolen to be returned. Praise God. So what I want to speak on tonight, on that note, praise God, to pick from this prophetic message, he said, desire to know me in a more intimate way. So my topic tonight is knowing God for yourself. Tell somebody you got to know God for yourself. Because we're living in a time where it's just not enough to know about God, y'all. Amen. Bible study is good and church is good. And we come, it's, it, we live in a time where we just can't come and sit and learn about God. Uh, that's good. But we have to go further than just learning about God. Amen. We have to have an experience with God. Amen. Tell somebody to have an experience with God. Amen. Get my message back up. Amen. So we have to move past on uh, just knowing, you know, and it's good if you want to study the, uh, read the whole Bible, that's fine. Study and know that, oh, there are 66 books and, you know, um, and know that God is, we should know that God is all powerful, he's all knowing. Oh, that's good, but we have to make it into a relationship. And not just a head knowledge. God desires for us to know him intimately. Everybody say we have to know him intim intimately. Some of us have known about God all our lives. Through church, you know, through moms, you know. And, 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 and it, it has to move past knowing just about God. It has to be on an intimate level. An intimate level is different from just knowing about God. Amen. Being a musician, I like to study other musicians. I like to, sometimes I pull up documentaries and I'll read some books on Miles Davis. And I like to know what went on in his life and how he got to be the great musician he was. And John Coltrane, uh, Quincy Jones, one of my favorite, and Cuba Laws, a famous flute player. Man, I, I, I study these guys. But guess what? I can tell you a lot about them, but I can't tell you that I know them because I never met them. <laughs> Amen. And this is how, you know, some of our relationship is with God. We can tell you a lot about God. We were ministering, matter of fact, in uh, Coverton. Uh, that was some years ago, man. Oh, wow. I'll say about 40, maybe 40. And at the jail there, inside the jail, we were ministering to some hardcore criminals. And, man, they had this one guy who knew every scripture in the Bible. And he could quote the scripture and say a cuss word in the middle of it. <laughs> he knew all about God. He could tell you everything. He, I mean, we, we were like, wow, this guy got some, he's knowledgeable. <laughs> you know, but he, he didn't have a relationship. It's a different. That's what I'm trying to get you to see tonight. You could know all about God. You could be a great theologian. You could speak Greek, speak Hebrew, you know, be well trained in all the, the theological stuff and not know God. You could be intellectual, brilliant, amen, smart as a whip, and not know God. Yet you can find somebody that's trying to find out what five times zero is. They have an experience with God every day. So don't let it stop at just knowing about God. We have to know him. Tell somebody you got to know him. 
you got to know him. Amen. He is a mighty God. You got to experience him intimately. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's look at John 17. Jesus was praying. It's a prayer that he was praying in John 3. In uh, in verse 17, he says, and I put that up. I don't know. Yeah, King James Version. I'm reading John 3 and 17 and say, and this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, to know God. That's what he's saying. This is the way. You want eternal life? I'm telling you how to do it. He's praying. To know. Amen. Oh, that's not the scripture. Three. I thought. I'm sorry. This is the way. Okay. Well, I'm going to read what I got. <laughs> and this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent. Amen. You have to know. Even Jesus prayed that for us, that we come to know God. If we want eternal life, we have to know God, not just about him. Okay? So how do I get to know God for myself? The answer is in the prophetic word that we read. It says, return and come to me. That's what God is telling us to do. Return. And you might say, well, you know, I go to church, and I'm, I'm there every Sunday. I'm there on Wednesday. Uh, I participate. Uh, but you know, you can sit in church, and your heart is nowhere there. Your heart could be somewhere far off. And so what the devil does, you don't mind if you do that. The devil don't mind if you have perfect attendance, as long as you don't get a revelation of having intimacy with God. So it's based upon that return to me, God is saying. And James 4 and 8, put that up. I think I got that one right. James 4 and 8. He said, draw nigh to God and he will do what? Tell your neighbors your move. Because a lot of people sitting back saying, well, I'm waiting on God to do something here. Thank you. Thank you. So draw nigh to God and he's going to do what? He's going to draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So it's up to us. You want that relationship with God? You want the intimacy with God? Draw nigh to him. And what he's going to do, he said it. He said, come to me, children. I'm waiting to come to you. Okay? Number two, it says in the prophetic message, desire to know him in a more intimate way. Hebrews 11 and 6. Put that up. But without faith, and we're familiar with this scripture, but without faith, it is, Im- it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must, must do what? That he is. Believe that he is. That he's what? That he is a rewarder of anybody who comes. Of, of anybody that sits in church. No. Of anybody that's in every ministry and in. And no. Those who diligently seek, amen, seek him, glory to God. Those who diligently seeking God, diligently seeking God means going to any length to find him and obey his word, to search for him and pursue him, amen. How many pursuers we have in the house tonight? How many are hungry for God? You know, and it's all right. God understands that we go through dry times where we get, you know, kind of lackadaisic, kind of lukewarm. Man, ask God to stir up a hunger in your spirit. Ask God. I, I guarantee he will. If you go to God and say, Lord, stir up a hunger in me for your word. I want more of you. Watch what happens. If you really yield your heart to him, he's going to stir up a hunger. And you're going to be thumbing through that word like you say, well, I ain't never studied a word like this before. Amen. Amen. And it, and it becomes a joy because... Now, your prayer time and your fellowship with God, uh, is, you're not looking at it as some kind of burden, something you got to do and get out the way. Oh, you're looking at it, you say, boy, I can't wait till the morning or whenever you do your prayer time to get before God and hear what he got to say about this. 
man, you'll be turning in your sleep. Lord, I can't wait to get before you in the morning. I, I, you know, you'll be talking to him in your sleep. Amen. Amen. When you diligently pursue him, amen, seek him, amen. And then the other part of the prophecy, to make him your priority, amen. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek, and we, we're familiar with this portion of scripture, but seek ye first, and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive at his kingdom and his righteousness. His way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be what? Given to you. But we have to seek him for he has to be a priority. Amen. How many of y'all get distracted throughout the day? That's everybody. Distractions come. We got things we got to do. We got children. We got jobs. We got people we're dealing with. We got situations we're dealing with. We got businesses. We got all kinds of things that come and distract. Amen. But God has to, you got to learn how to say, God, I'm making you my priority. When those things come to distract, go to God first. I was in a situation, man, they had, uh, I was, uh, this, this one wasn't at the last company I was at. It was another company. I was a manager. And, boy, I had the whole plant came against my department. Uh, in my department, I had some guys, one of my guys missed it. We, we inspect stuff. And he had missed it. He missed it. He missed it. And, and I talked to him about it. And so anyway, the manager, we had our morning meeting, and they know that that was going to come up in that meeting. And boy, they were sitting there rubbing their hands because they didn't like me being a manager. And they were sitting there rubbing their hands and saying, ooh, he going to get it. He going to get it. And so I said, Lord, I need an answer. <laughs> because the culture of that company at that time was you was going to get it. Amen. It, it, had a, it had a horrible culture, uh, departmental fights and wars and all that stuff going on. And I said, God, I need an answer. And um, at lunchtime, I thought I heard from God because, I, I, you know, he said, I, I was telling myself, you know, I'm going to just, I was trying to think of something to tell him to, to trick him out to get out of that situation. You know, <laughs> and the Lord wasn't speaking. <laughs> But when I really yield to God, I say, God, I really need an answer. So let me tell you, boy, God, worship is so powerful. The Lord had me put on a worship song through my lunch break. And through that worship song, the Lord, Lord told me to own up to it. <laughs> I wanted to say, get thee behind me. I say, own up to it. That's not the culture here. <laughs> I say, I want you to own up to it. I say, what? And so... But anyway, throughout the worship song, after everything, lunch break ended, I felt pretty good. I said, you know, you know what? That's God. That's what God's saying. And I felt I began to feel good about it. So here come the meeting, man. We go in there. Boy, you can see them rubbing their hands. Oh, my God. So I sit there, and they went around the table asking each manager what the status of their department. And uh, they came to me. Yeah, uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, we, uh, what happened with this situation? I said, he said, what's going on? Because what happened, it was a real serious situation because it caused product to go to a company, and it was wrong, and it cost a lot of money to ship it out, to ship it back, and to redo it, a lot of money. Amen. And um, so I told him, I said, we missed it. Like that. And it was silent. I hear a pin drop in that room. And the uh, CEO of the company looked at me. Looked at everybody, and he said, you know, guys sitting down with the head, with the head down. <laughs> they were like, oh, he going to get it. He said, see, that's what I'm talking about. We need honesty at this company. <laughs> God is good, huh? See, when God tell you to do something, <laughs> I didn't want to own up to it. I'm going to be honest with you. I wanted to think of some kind of, you know, <laughs> and I was saved. <laughs> But, man, God is so good. God is so good. He says, see, this is what I'm talking about. We need this kind of honesty in this company. <laughs> and I just looked at them guys. Boy, I wanted to say, I want to stick my tongue out. You know what I said? <laughs> I said, I'm going to be nice. <laughs> I'm going to be nice. But God, is a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a rewarder. He's a restorer. He loves us saints. Amen. 
If you don't spend any, any time doing nothing else, spend your time cultivating your relationship with God. Man, that relationship goes a long way, and, and, and he'll show you stuff. He can see fur. He's omnipotent. He knows. He knows what you're going, what's going to attack you before it attacks you. Someone said we can see to the corner, but God can see around the corner. Amen. He knows what's going on. He's everywhere. He can handle every situation at the same time. He has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. He wants to see you make it. Amen. You know, and we have that relationship. We can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit to say, go this way. Don't do that. Stop right here. Don't drive that today. Go a different route today. You know, God, he's speaking all the time. That's the kind of relationship we have to have with him, especially in this day and time. Amen. Amen. God restored, and I'm going to share this testimony, and I'm, I'm closing out. And 41 years old, I got diagnosed with a ruptured disc in my back. When I tell you, I thought my life was over, man, that pain, man. Whew, had the sciatic pain running down my leg. Uh, I was walking. I had, I, I had to walk like this because the inflammation had all this. So I couldn't even stand up straight. Uh, now, I used to jog. I used to jog in the Crescent City Classics every year. Amen. When I was, what, from maybe 25, I think I did the, my last one at 40 years old, you know. And maybe that was contributed to my back. <laughs> but I used to run and enjoy that, you know. I was, so I was a runner, you know. And I get off from work and even run five miles like it was nothing, you know. And um, here I am now, can't walk on a treadmill for 10 minutes at two miles an hour. Couldn't go past 10 minutes. That pain was so unbearable. So anyway, I went to the doctor. They did x-ray. Doctor said, Mr. Lewis, unfortunately, I have bad news. Say, from a, a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, you are a 9 right now. Say, you need to go into surgery right now. And I'm a quiet guy, but that day, something, it, it, I know it was God when that happened to me because I'm quiet, you know, because it, it came out. I said, ain't nobody cutting on me <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and <laughs> so the doctor looked back at me and said, I, well, I say, well, Doc, what other options do I have? He said, well, you could do that pain management thing, get that needle stuck in you, but that ain't going to do you no good. You're going to be back here begging me to cut on you. That's what he told me. And so I'll do that. I said, I'll do that option. Because I've heard too many horror stories about the back surgery at that time. I don't know. I'm not. You, you find out what God wants for your situation. Everybody back situation is different, you know. Anyway, I, I, I got before God. I said, Lord, I need an answer, Lord. I know, I know you're a healer. I, I know you're a restorer. And, um. This thing here, it was stopping me from, because at that time, my child, my children, two uh, younger children were at the ride on your daddy back age, you know. They want to ride on your back when you come home from work. And so I had to, I, had to, I couldn't do that with them at that time. And I felt bad about it. My son wanted to throw the football every evening. And I said, Lord, I, I can't. Life is not ending here. And then the doctor told me, he said, I'll tell you what you do. Go home, get your remote, get in your recliner, don't move and don't do nothing. Okay. <laughs> I tried that for a couple of days. That didn't work. It was getting worse. Okay. And the Lord told me, you know, it's something, that's why you got to know God. I got before the Lord, and the Lord says, keep moving. The doctor say, become, you know, immobile. <laughs> and God say, keep moving. So I'm like, okay, God, you got to give me an answer. So anyway, I did the epidural. They shot me with that long nine-inch needle. Ooh, they <laughs> Uh, but, man, you got relief, you know, you got relief for about, you know, a month, maybe a month or so, a little more, you know, sometimes. So I was on my, time passed, I was on my third one. And you show you, uh, you got to be, how I many you know God can speak and use anybody he wants? So the doctor that was, at this time, ministering the epidural, he looked at me and said, he said, you know, you don't have to keep coming in here for this. I said, oh, Yeah. I said, well, this is God. <laughs> I, hardly I just knew this is God speaking to this man. He said, you don't have to keep coming in here through doing this. I said, what, what can I do? He said, you need to tighten your stomach. I said, Doc, I ain't about to get no six-pack. I was like, you know, he said, no, I'm not talking about no six-pack. He said, you are carrying all your weight on your back. 
So you need to be carrying the weight on your stomach. Your stomach, your core has to carry all your body weight. I didn't know that. Amen. But that's what he told me. I said, well, what can I do? He said, because the pain, you know, he said, when you have this shot and you are not aching, do these exercises. But God is something. He could put people in your life. I never forget his name, Dr. Lou. I never forget that. And um, I did exactly what he said. And I started doing the, the, the planks and some of the exercises he gave me and, uh, and, and just doing what God said to do, you know, and, and whatever God would allow me to push further, you know. And he said, keep walking every day. That's what he told me. Keep walking every day. So I get on a treadmill, and when I begin to get into the exercise, maybe the third or fourth day, a week or so, I noticed that I could go further on a treadmill. You know, the 10 minutes turned into 15 minutes, and the 15 minutes began to turn into 20 minutes, and the 20 minutes turned into 30 minutes. 30 minutes turned into 45 minutes, and so I was doing an hour, you know, like, wow, you know. And um, then I kept doing the exercises you were doing. I'm doing them, I'm talking about religiously, I was doing those exercises. And God said, I'm going to bring restoration. And today, that's what, that was what I'm, oh, okay, my, well, I'm about, that was 40, I was 41, so I'm, I'm coming up on 65. And so that was, yeah, 20, uh, what, 20. I'm right. <laughs> 24. Thank you, Pastor P. <laughs> 24 years ago that I have not had a surgery, have not been cut on. I can walk. I can squat. I can touch my toes, praise God, and never had a serious relapse. I'm, gonna say, I'm saying serious because the only relapse I had is when I brought it on myself when I'm trying to do something crazy, trying to overdo it. But no, no relapse, no nothing. And never been cut on. That's why I know God as a restorer. Now, somebody sitting here tonight and say, boy, I need God to restore something in my life. He will do it. You trust him tonight. He is a restorer. If he do it for one of us, he'll do it for all of us. He's a restorer. We have to trust that he can restore and heal whatever. Just like the prophetic word said, embrace that word, I'm telling you. God said he's going to restore everything. Oh, that sounds good when you say that. Everybody will say that. God is going to restore everything. Say it again. God is going to restore everything. Say it one more time. God is going to restore everything. <laughs> Glory to God. He will do it. He will do it. It's not just a for, for a select few. It's for those that diligently seek him. Those that come to him, draw nigh to him. Those that intentionally communicate with him. Because you know, relationship is a two-way, hey, amen, two-way conversation. And then it requires a lot of listening. That when God speaks, we can hear what he's telling us to do and what direction he's telling us to go. Now, he did that, the same thing with my eye. Many of you know a few years ago, I lost sight in this eye. Praise God. Uh, and the devil, uh, the devil, <laughs> well, the doctor, the devil speaking through the doctor, the doctor looked at me and said, it is not, <laughs> that is not reversible. Looked at me and my wife and said, that is not reversible. And I left out of that doctor's office. First, the first impact of it, and I'm going to be honest, I left out of there like this. <laughs> but before I got to my car, I had to lift my hand and say, God, <laughs> You restored my back, <laughs> and you could restore this too. Glory to God. <laughs> and the funny thing, I had an eye exam at, at my job, and my job required that you have, you know, good vision, you know. And um, job I was working at the time, and um, I had an eye appointment due on that. Well, this happened in October of, what that was, 2019, something like that, 2018 or 19. And I had an end of, uh, eye appointment. On my job, December, no, January 7th of the next year. So I had a few months, you know. So it went about two or three months, man. And, and, and when I, I, in between that, they called me over for a spot physical where they wanted to check everything. And they told me that you failed the eye test. I failed the eye test at that time. So I had to trust God. Um, and through that time, when I, had to, when I went back on January 7th, a, f a couple of days, I was leaving Bible study one night. Well, I, told, I asked my daughter, 
well, prior to that, I asked my daughter, I say, um, oh, she was driving me to Bible study because I couldn't hardly drive too good at that time. Um, so I grabbed the wheel one night, and I said, because I could see a little better. And my daughter got in the car. She said, Dad, what you doing? I said, I'm driving. <laughs> i never forget the look on her face when I said that. And so on the way to church, my wife called us because she was on the way from work. And she said, how y'all making out? And my daughter blurted out, Daddy driving by fate, not by sight. <laughs> i never forget that. I said, boy, she got the word in her. <laughs> she said, Daddy driving by fate, not by sight. I said, you know, Daddy wouldn't put you in that position. You know, God is good. You know, I wouldn't put my daughter in that position driving blind. Amen. But God brought forth a healing. Hey, man, with a doctor, I mean, I couldn't wait to go back to that doctor for a checkup when he t- said, looked at, us, look, looked at us in our face and said, that's irreversible. It's not, it's not going to be, it's permanent. And when I went back to him, man, he did all kind of studying and checking up, and he could not find a medical reason why my vision had returned. <laughs> Praise God. God is a restorer. Hey, Amen. And I told him, I said, I told him like this, I said, God, I said, God is a healer. You know, I said, put that in your report. <laughs> he just looked at me, you know. <laughs> God is a healer. Amen. He's good. God is a mighty, good God. Praise God. So in closing scripture, I want to give you here. One of the biggest enemies of knowing God is religion. Amen. I was so glad when pastor said we're going to stop doing church and we're going to be the church. You know, we're doing the church. You're just doing tradition and religion. And when God, man, when he said that, I said, ooh, yes, indeed. We stop doing. We're gonna, we are the church. Amen. So we don't do church. We are the church. Amen. The Apostle Paul, how many of you know he was a well-trained religious leader? Amen. He was well-trained under the best, highest order of the Pharisees. Man, he was, he was trained. Amen. Prior to receiving Jesus, he had his education. He was well trained. But I like what he said in Philippians 3 and 8. He said, out of all the stuff that Paul knew, he said, and this is after he came to Christ, because we know that on the road to Damascus, that's when he gave his life to the Lord. Philippians 3 and 8. But more than that, I count everything as lost compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ. In other words, all my train and all this religion that I know, all this tradition that I know, amen, I count that as lost compared to knowing Jesus Christ. The most important thing he's saying here is knowing God. He said, knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, and of growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him, a joy unequal. For his sake, I have lost everything, and I consider it all garbage so that I may gain Christ. That should be our attitudes. Amen. All that traditional stuff, all that religiosity, amen, is nothing compared, you know, to knowing and having an experiment with God, experimenting him. Amen. Yes, we should continue to study. Amen. Yes, we should learn all we want to know about God, but we have to allow it to go past that and be intentional about having a relationship with him where we can experience him. Amen. How many want to experience healing in your body? Amen. How many want to ex- see manifestation of the things that you believe in God for? Amen. Amen. That intimate relationship with him, praise God. Amen. It's the most important thing. Philippians 3 and 10 says, and this, so that I may know him experientially, oh man, experientially, becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding remarkable wa- Remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in that same way experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers, and that I may share the fellowship of his suffering by being continually conformed inwardly and to his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did. Amen. Question tonight, what good is what good is it to know that he's omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent, that he's a restorer, 
unless he's all those things to me by experience. And you see what I'm saying? You can know all that about him, and that's good. But if you're not experiencing that, you're missing out on some good living. I'm telling you, because God is good. He wants you to experience him. Amen. He wants to give you that. He wants to have that kind of uh, fellowship with you. Amen. Amen. Do you believe it tonight? Amen. Amen. And the Bible says uh, it, it's the doers of the word that will be justified. So we hear this tonight, and, 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 and hearing is fine. It, 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 it ignites your faith. Praise God. That's a start. We hear it, but it's the doers. Now it's time to do. We know what the vision is for this church. We know what God has spoken. We know the word that comes forth on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. We know that this is a word church. We know that God's presence is in this place. Amen. But he wants to come into your heart and give you an experience. Everybody say experience him. Amen. Experience him. Amen. So praise God. That's the word for tonight. Amen. Knowing him for yourself. You got to know him for yourself. Amen. Know him for yourself. Praise God. Now, Father, we thank you tonight. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we thank you, Lord, for this word that was spoken tonight, God. Father, we pray that this word has touched somebody's heart tonight that will cause them to draw close to you, that will cause them a, a hunger to, the, to ignite in their spirit, in their soul, that will want more and more of you, God, that, would, that, that are tired of just being uh, knowing about you but want to know you more intimately, want to know you uh, as they make you their priority, God, and draw near to you. You said that you will draw near to them. And we believe that tonight. We thank you for the victory in everything we do. Your word says in Christ we always triumph, Father. And we praise you tonight that we are on the winning side. And we give you all the honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. He's so good. <laughs> So, on that note, are there any questions? Uh, we have questions Bible study now. So, if you have any questions, anything need clarification. How to get to know God yourself? Yes. Yes. The number one way, the number one thing, you have to want him. Amen. You have to have a desire. Okay. And as we said in James 4 and 8, draw near to him. Amen. Draw near to God. And that's your, your job to draw. You know, because a lot of times we get, people get uh, complacent in their Christian walk and say, well, I'm just waiting on God to do something, to say something, or give me a word, you know. Uh, draw near to him. That's an action of faith. When you draw near to him, he's going to come to you, amen, and, and begin to show you which way to go. So that's the a, that's a number one way. you got to desire him first, want him, you know, because if you don't want him, your will is, is, is being stubborn that, well, I don't really want what they talked about. So, he, you know, you tie God's hand. But if you want him, desire him, and then do the drawing to come to him, he's going to come. He's going to come to you. Amen. Praise God. Hope that answered your question. Uh, Elder, I'm so glad that you said that uh, your heart rejoiced as it did mine when Pastor said we're no longer going to do church, but we're going to be the church because we are the church, whereas religion has thrown a blanket on a lot of people with confusion, because one person might say, well, uh, I don't know how to talk to God, or I don't know how to pray, uh, because they think they have to pray like somebody else, or they have to dance like somebody else, or they have to do church like somebody else. And just for a moment, would you just touch on the, p on the part where a person needs to just know they can commune and talk to God as they talk to themselves, or talk to their, uh, uh, their spouse, or talk to their friends? Just expound on that yes, for a moment. Yes, 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 sure. Yeah, talking to God is, is not some kind of special religious posture that we have to take. Amen. It's just like I'm talking to, I say, hey, how you doing, Pastor Gales? You know, 
And, and it sounds, see how natural that sounds? Pastor Gales, what are you doing today? What's, what's, what's on your agenda today? You know, uh, Pastor Gales, can you help me with this? That's a natural conversation. And that's what we do. That's the way God, when he wants to be us. Amen. He don't want us to try to copycat what we, somebody else did, you know, with this great, pious, you know, uh, peacock, religious look and, and got all the posture and polish. Well, let me see. <laughs> the collar straight. <laughs> And, you know, you know, God, you know, I don't know where some of that stuff come from, you know, God, you are, you know, it, 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 my brother, you are mind of God. I'm like, what? come on, you don't need, you know, you just talk to, talk to God, you know, and we don't have to say, you know, don't let the uh, King James version of the Bible fool you, you know, you don't have to go to him with all your comments and thou and, you know, he, you know, he say, Lord, I come to you, you don't have to go, Lord. I come it to thee, you know, and you got all your these and thous and all that in place, and God, He just want He just wants you, <laughs> He just wants you. <laughs> Praise God. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. Be yourself. That's it. Be yourself. He's a good God. Man, any more questions? Right. Well, praise God. He's good. Uh, well, we just want to offer Christ to those that you may uh, have heard this message tonight and thinking about it, you know, say, well, you know what? I want to draw closer to God. I want more of God. Or maybe you don't know God and you want to give your life to him. Amen. We want to pray with you tonight. Those that are watching, those that are here, praise God. We just want to pray with you. Uh, anybody here that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, raise your hand if you do. We'll pray with you. I just want to bow your heads where you are. Praise God. Amen. And I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you just as I am. And I thank you for loving me in the way you do. I thank you for giving your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who shared his precious and powerful blood for me. Lord, I believe that he died and that he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. I believe it within my heart, and I confess it in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So praise God. So we are going to, uh, amen, move on and uh, receive our tithes and offerings tonight. Amen. Get excited about it. God is a restorer. He's a giver. He rebukes the devourer. Praise God. So, amen. If you need an envelope, you know, fill up your envelope. Just uh, have that done. Praise God. We're going to do that. If you're giving online, uh, you can text LTWI 45777. Amen. If you want to drop it off at the drop box, there's a drop box by the administration office. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We have an announcement here. That, uh, the ladies that are going to VCMI trip in D.C. in October, please pick up an information sheet at the hospitality desk. Praise God. All right. Let's uh, receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. Just lift your tithes, lift your offering up to the Lord. The Lord, I thank you for the privilege to give, to return my tithes, return my offerings. I thank you for opening up the window of heaven and showing our blessings that there should not be room enough to receive it. I thank you for rebuking the devourer for my sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm. 
Father, we praise you, we honor you, we thank you so much for these gifts that we received tonight, God. We thank you for multiplying every seed sown a hundredfold, God. Father, we thank you for blessing every household represented here, God. Father, we thank you that we are blessed people. We are blessed going in, we are blessed going out, and we are a blessing. We thank you and we give you all the glory and honor for the privilege to give in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet and get ready to do Dismiss. Amen. Be after me, much prayer. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> much power. Little prayer. Little power. No prayer. No power. Amen. Go be, go forward and be blessed. <laughs> Thank you. 